So hello, friends. My name is Annie. I am your hostess tonight. Um, I, You can find me. I'm into the bold. Uh, I am a travel planner, writer, and educator. So I love, love hosting these events. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay. Um, give me a thumbs up when you can see this. Excellent. Okay, cool. So just a few things before we get started. So obviously this is a nomadic network event. Um, for those of you who are new, TNN, the nomadic network, is a global community of travel enthusiasts who support in, and inspire one another to travel better, cheaper, and longer. We started at the end of 2019 with plans of hosting in-person meetups in 22 different cities around the world, bringing travelers together to meet each other, learn from, and share travel resources with each other. Uh, we all know what happened, you know, for a little while, everything went online, but now we are offering three different types of events. So travel presentations like this one, uh, we are back to having regional in-person meetups to connect you to travel enthusiasts near you. And then there are also travel book clubs where, uh, we invite authors and to join the discussion. Also, if you have not checked it out yet, uh, there is a brand new website, thenomadic.com. It's awesome. It's a great place for connecting. And, um, you know, like there are subgroups you can join based on different destinations or types of travel. It's really awesome. So if you have not yet checked that out, please do so. Okay. Did, did that just, yeah, I was like, did that skip one? No, it did not. Okay. So few things. So here is how to join the Nomadic Network. So Instagram, TikTok, virtual and in-person events. Um, if you have not seen, the Nomadic Network is now doing group tours. They have some incredible destinations. Um, and you can also become a chapter leader in your city if there is not already a chapter. And reminders. Okay. So let's talk about a little housekeeping. So we love it when we can see your face and you're engaged and all of those things. So feel free to turn your video camera on, but please stay muted um, just to make sure there's no background noise and that we can all hear Haley really well. Um, second, this is important. I know there are going to be so many questions. So what you're going to do is you're going to use that chat function to drop your questions. Um, I'm going to keep track of them. So if you will just like all caps, put question in there so that I make sure I can grab that. And then at the end, uh, we will do a Q and A. Uh, so that would be perfect. Feel free to drop questions all along as we go. I'm going to also put Haley's information in there so that you can get in touch with her, all of these things. Um, if you find value in these events, consider joining the TNN Plus community. Um, you'll get access to the live, the whole library of over 200 past events and all the future events as well. Um, you find that at thenomadicnetwork.com backslash TNN Plus. And we are so grateful to our speakers. They do this out of the kindness of their hearts. They are not getting paid for this. They are just excited to share their knowledge with you. So we encourage you to connect with them on social media, stay in touch. They have so much valuable information to share and you'll definitely want to stay in touch with Haley. Um, so you can ask for advice and refer people to them later on. We are a network after all, right? We support each other. And last but not least, we are here to learn, satiate your wanderlust and have fun. So sit back, listen, take notes if you wish and enjoy. So without further ado, I am going to welcome our amazing speaker today, Haley Doman. Did I get that right? I even yes, asked you before. You got it. Okay. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> so Haley, uh, you can find her on basically all of the social media places as Haley on hiatus. I will drop links in just a minute. 
Um, Haley started working with hotels at the beginning of 2021. Since then, she's worked with over 20 hotels around the U.S. and Europe, most recently in Croatia, Slovenia, and Iceland. She worked with four hotels in Iceland and was even offered a part-time job with the company as their lead content creator, allowing her to travel to Iceland every few months, which I am not at all jealous of. Um, <laughs> She's never taken courses about blogging. So all of these accomplishments in the past year have totally been trial and error. So she has realized what works and what doesn't and is so excited to teach you what she has learned along the way. And with that, I am going to turn it over to Haley. Hi, everyone. Okay, let me just share my screen. One second. Okay. Can everyone see? Okay, great. Okay, so working with hotels and how to get started. Um, so obviously everyone is here to find out the insider secrets. Um, so let's dive right in. So what to expect during our time? So who am I and why am I qualified to help all of you? the very first step and what you need to brainstorm when working with hotels, gaining experience the hard way. Trust me, there are many hard ways and lessons you will learn in hotel marketing, um, but I will help you navigate all of those and give you some tips. The three things you'll need to approach hotels, finding the right contacts, and then obviously question and answer with me at the end. So a little bit about me, um, I'm from London originally and have lived in three different countries. Um, I have been in the US for 17 years now, which is crazy. Um, so I feel like my accent is a little bit mixed. So sometimes people ask if I'm Australian or South African and I say no. Um, I am a teacher full time. So I actually have a full time job teaching elementary kids. Um, and I've been kind of building up my marketing skills for a few years, five or six years, and have been in hotel marketing now for just over one year. Um, I love to travel, as do all of you guys. That's why we're here. And I've been to 30 different countries. So a little pun at the top, if any of you get it, but I definitely started from the bottom. Um, everything you'll learn is, um, like Annie said, from trial and error. I have taken no blogger courses, um, haven't paid for anything myself. It's just all practicing and hearing many, many no's. Um, but since learning everything that I have, these are some of the brands that I've worked with. Um, so some of you may be familiar with some of the bigger names here, like Intercontinental, Four Seasons, Marriott, um, and some of the others that you can see on the screen. So these are some of the places that I have traveled for hotel marketing. Um, most of the beginning of my experience did start in the US. Um, I'm located in Boston, Massachusetts. So You'll learn a little later in the slides, but a key to starting in hotel marketing is to start small. Um, do not go after the big, you know, top names like the Marriott when you're first starting. That comes a little later. Um, but I've traveled to the US, Croatia, Slovenia, Iceland, and most recently two destinations for a press trip in Spain. So this is an example of a full hotel campaign. Um, most of them look very different. It depends, you know, which hotel you're working with, what they're looking for, um, and what you can provide based on where you are in the process. So this example is from a hotel that I worked with in Savannah, Georgia, in the US. Um, this was actually my first ever hotel collaboration um in the beginning of 2021 so this is the exact process that I followed um to get this hotel so my first step I got all of my tools ready which you'll be learning about in a few more slides 
I research smaller boutique hotels. This is really, really important. Um, one of my tips that I will mention is to choose small family owned hotels if possible. Um, most towns and cities, you know, have these scattered around and they're the smaller chains that are looking for more marketing and are willing to work with people with no experience and who are just starting to get into hotel marketing. So once I had Savannah in mind and I knew my destination and where I wanted to go, um, I got my tools ready, did my research and sent my pitch email and got my first response. So step two, once I had that initial response, um, I kind of winged it with what I was offering. Like I said, I, I didn't take any courses and had no guidance. So I just figured, you know, what would a hotel want from me? Um, so I decided to offer one in-feed post on Instagram, story coverage throughout my stay. Um, so that's Instagram stories just to document, you know, behind the scenes of the hotel and a small portfolio of images. Um, there's a lot of conversation about image rights and if you should give your images to hotels. I'll get into this a little later, um, but in my opinion, if you're just starting out and have never worked with hotels, it's always good incentive for the hotels to offer them something that they need. And most likely, most of the hotels do need images for their website or Instagram or marketing purposes. Um, so this was not a big portfolio. It was about three to four images. So just keep that in mind. And then step three, the hotel did offer me a two night comp stay for a friend and I to Savannah. It's very rare um, if you're just starting out to get two nights. Typically they'll offer one night stay. Um, but in rare occasions, if you meet some nice hotel people, it is possible, um, they will offer you two nights. So this is my first ever campaign. Um, you can see some of the images down below that I gave to the hotel and also posted on my social media page. So your first steps. So the biggest question I get from people is how do I begin if I have no experience? And obviously, this is exactly where I was last year. Um, I've been working in education for about six years as a teacher. So when I first started approaching hotels, I was thinking, how am I going to get these places to work with me when all I've done is work with children? So. If you map out something like this before you're getting started or take some notes, it's important to realize that every single person has skills. So if you're in finance, real estate, if you're a teacher, if you're in marketing, whatever you're in, everyone has a skill that they can use to work with hotels. So I've broken down kind of my thinking back when I was starting in 2021. So my first steps during this process was to think of my education. So in college, I studied writing and sociology. So that already makes me a people person and a good writer. Um, and I took an SEO marketing course back a few years ago. Um, so I want you guys to just think if you're taking notes right now, just think about what your background is. If you went to college, if you didn't go to college, if you've taken any courses in anything, um, kind of think about what skills you might have to offer. The next thing is to break down that experience. So different jobs that you've had over the years, break those down. And again, think of the skills that you have or you've gained from those different positions. So something that I think really helped me get into hotel marketing was my food and writing and photography background. Um, when I moved to Boston, I was here for a few years and then was working as a teacher and decided I needed to do something creative in my spare time. So I started working for a food blog in Boston. Um, 
this was purely freelance. I was not getting paid for this at all. I was just giving up my precious time to gain experience. Um, so I was basically going to different restaurants in Boston, um, getting free food, which was a great perk, um, and writing about it and taking photos for this blog. So I did this for about four years until I moved into a different position. Um, but anything you can do to kind of build different skills, I would say, do as much as you can. We'll get into this in the next few slides, but break down your education and experience and those skills. OK, so this is the very first step and thing that you need to think about. Okay, this brings me to the next slide, work for free and gain experience. So as a teacher, like I said, for five years, I was doing various kind of freelancing things and trying as best I could to get into anything, social media, marketing, writing, photography, anything I could find, I did. All of this was for free for five years. I was not getting paid to do anything. Um, Boston is a small community. So I was messaging people on Instagram. I was messaging restaurants. I was messaging companies, anything I could do to offer my services and gain experience. And I knew that could build my resume and potentially help with hotel marketing. So all of these slides, I believe Annie will be available level for people at the end. Um, so you'll have all of this information. So don't feel like you need to take all of these notes. Um, I know there's a lot on this page. But one of the things I do want to highlight is photography. If you feel like you have zero experience, you've never done social media, you're sitting here thinking I'm not a great photographer, you know, how and why should these hotels work with me? The first thing you can do is to start taking photos of anything. Up your photography game. If you're going on a vacation soon that you've paid for, um, you can do a staycation in your hometown. Anything that you can do, start doing and start taking photos. So before I pitched the Savannah Hotel, I booked a hotel for myself and paid for the hotel in Boston. And I started taking kind of blogger pictures, I guess you could say, um, you know, I was doing the poses and, you know, things that you would expect. Um, but I was thinking of my photos from the viewpoint of the hotel. You know, why should they choose me? Why? What makes me stand out? Um, so that was the first thing I started doing. Just up your photography game go out into your city or your hometown and start taking photos and just build a portfolio for yourself. Um, it doesn't seem like it will work, but trust me, this is exactly what I did and it obviously worked. So do that ASAP. Um, another thing would be writing. Um, if any of you have any kind of social media account, you know, a blog, Instagram, Facebook, anything, work on your writing. Another key thing that hotels look for is good writing. Um, obviously, I, you know, I had that experience from studying writing in college. But in my opinion, anyone can write and share how they feel and turn it into something beautiful. Um, so the next time you post something on Instagram or on any kind of social media platform, Think about how you would write something if a hotel was looking at your account. Um, hotels work with people because they want them to post these pictures and they want people to read a great caption and want to book that hotel. So even if you go out next week and you post a picture of a playground, write about the playground like it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. Um, it sounds silly and ridiculous. And when I first started doing this, I felt insane. Um, like if you look back at my Instagram page, some of the things I was writing about, it, it's ridiculous. It, it's like poetry about, I don't know, like a park or a playground. It, it was ridiculous. 
but work on photography and writing. Um, I've posted a few more things on here, like social media, blogging, videography. Um, I think a big thing that hotels look for now and a thing that hotels have asked me a lot recently are for reels. If you're on social media, TikTok and reels are huge right now. Um, the most recent hotel I worked with, they didn't even want any photography or captions or anything. They just wanted videos. Um, reels, in my opinion, are very easy to navigate. Um, if you've kind of dabbled in that, you know, it's great to kind of experiment and start downloading different tools to up your video game. Um, I don't think I have this on here, but CapCut, um, I can put that in the chat later, is a really, really good video editor. Um, and it's what I personally use to do all of my hotel videos. So this is a great tool to use. And I've heard feedback from a lot of um, hotels that they like the transitions and the things that come from that app. So I think that would be a great thing to download. Um, again, with the photography, the videos kind of play into this as well. Like take a day for yourself, go out into your city or hometown, just start taking videos of random things and put it into the app and play around with it. Um, I think a great thing to do before you start actively pitching hotels would be to visit a hotel, pay for that hotel, have a little staycation and just start taking videos and playing around with what that would look like if you were working for that hotel. So the next slide, this is the question I get the most on Instagram, finding the right contacts. So start small. I think I mentioned this earlier. Um, do not start pitching huge hotels right away. Start with small family owned places. Um, those places really appreciate people who live in that town or that city. Um, so recently I've partnered with a lot of inns. Inns are great, um, you know, little properties that you can work with. They're typically family owned. They're not big chain hotels. And for example, I partnered with one just down the street in Boston and they wanted to work with me, not because of my experience, but because I lived in Boston and knew the neighborhood. So keep in mind, you also have that going for you. So start small. You have to learn to walk before you can run. Um, so please don't start pitching, you know, big brands because they get so many emails so work with smaller hotels. And then once you've built your portfolio, then you can start pitching the bigger hotels once you have a resume, like a hotel resume to work with. So finding the right contacts. Um, this is a great first step. If you feel like you're ready, you know, you've mastered your photography, your videography and your writing, and you're ready to kind of pitch any hotels or inns how to find, you know, who to contact. So typically when you go to a hotel's website, it does show you the generic front desk or info email. So all of us have probably seen, you know, info at marriott.com, front desk at marriott.com. So if you send an email to those addresses, 10% of the time you will receive a response. The other time, it just goes straight to junk. If they see marketing in the subject, it has nothing to do with the front desk. So they typically do not respond. So my advice would be you can try to send an email to that address and put the subject as I typically say follow up. So they think they've already spoken to me, which is a really good tip. So I would write that one down. Um, if you just say hotel marketing or I would like to work with you, they will not open your email, trust me. So if you put something like follow-up chat or, 
you know, something that makes it seem like you've already had a conversation with them. In my experience, they typically respond to those emails. If you do not get a response from the hotel's generic front desk or info email, um, I would, you know, go to the page, send them an email, do not send a pitch and just say to them a brief few sentences, you know, I'm so-and-so, I'm interested in working with the hotel and I'm looking for a marketing email or a sales contact from your team. If you say that, instead of sending them your whole pitch email, they typically will respond to that as well. So keep that in mind and keep it short if you're sending it to the generic email. Um, in my opinion, the most responses I've gotten from hotels has been from Instagram or Facebook. So typically, if you go to any hotel's Instagram, um, down below, I have an image right here, but they'll have a contact button with um, an email. So if you test it right now and go to any hotel's page, that contact, contact button typically directs you right to the sales and marketing team and not the front desk. Because you have to remember this is linked through Instagram and the people who run the hotel's Instagram are sales and marketing people. So this is your best bet if you want to find the correct contact um, and you want your email to get to the right place. If this fails, trust me, there's so many ways, guys. I've, I've tried everything. If this fails, send them a message, um, you know, slide into the DMs. They appreciate the persistence, trust me. Um, I have done this so many times, even recently, and I've worked with so many hotels at this point. I still slide into the DMs and ask them for a direct marketing or sales email or give them a few sentences about who I am and what I want to do with the hotel. Um, again, like I said, with the emails, keep this very, very short. If a hotel opens your message and sees a whole long paragraph about, you know, who you are and what you're doing and what you can offer, they're not going to respond. It's going to be too long for them. So just keep it short and simple and just say, hey, I'm Haley. I'm a content creator in the US. Um, do you have a direct contact for your sales and marketing team? Um, in my opinion, 95% of the time, I always get a response from hotels by doing this. Okay. So the tools you need, this is where it gets juicy. So these are the three main things, you know, so now we've practiced our photography, our videography, we found the correct contact. And now what do you need to send to the hotels? So you need a portfolio, a media kit, and a stellar pitch email. So let's jump into those. So a portfolio. So this is an example of my first ever portfolio. Um, I designed this on Canva. If any of you are familiar with that, I can also drop the link in the chat after. It's where I do everything. Um, I do my media kit, my templates, everything I send to hotels is from Canva. So your portfolio is basically a quick snapshot for hotels to see your best shots and what you can do. So obviously the pictures I have in here are from, you know, some are from a Boston trip, some are from a Savannah trip. So I've kind of tweaked this, um, you know, since working with hotels. But when I first pitched the Savannah Hotel I told you guys about, I literally just had pictures, like blogger pictures of myself um, and of Boston. So I went out and just took, you know, some photos around the city and some hotels around the city and just put it into a portfolio. Keep in mind this isn't to show like your resume or what you can do. It's literally for um, hotels to see your photography skills and how you shoot and why they should work with you. So do you need one? Yes. 
Um, it's the very first thing brands see. So make it count, you know, make it aesthetically pleasing. All of us have heard that word, I'm sure, many times. Um, do you need to have worked with fancy hotels? No, just take good photography and use any photos that you think are a good fit from past vacations. And you can make that into a portfolio. So the second thing you need is a media kit. So this, obviously this is not mine, this is like 12 different media kits, but this is also from Canva. Um, if you go to Canva right now and type in media kit at the top, it will literally give you all of these. Um, and there's so many different options based on you know your personality and how you want to present yourself. So this I think is the key out of the three of them to getting hotel partnerships. Um, it's kind of like a resume of blogging and content creation. So definitely make one of these ASAP if you want to work with hotels. So what you should include in your media kit, your demographics. So if you go to Instagram and you click on um, your analytics at the top, it should show you the breakdown of all of the people that follow you, um, their ages, are they male, are they female, where are they located? So I learned this the hard way because my media kit, my audience is typically about 21 to 45, typically. That's the most um, age range of people that follow me on Instagram. So I pitched a hotel just outside of Boston and I sent my media kit. I sent my email. I was super confident and they came back to me and said, well, our audience is over 60 year olds. And I was embarrassed. Um, I didn't do my research, obviously. Um, so keep in mind, this is very important for hotels to see. They want to see how old your followers are, um, where they're located. There's no point, you know, working with a hotel in Thailand, if all of your followers only travel in the US. So they want to see all of your analytics. Um, also include any collaborations you've done, if you have any. This could be anything. It doesn't have to be hotels. It could be literally any kind of collaboration. If you don't have any collaborations and you're literally just starting out, um, that's fine just add those demographics I just mentioned and any samples of photography that you have. It's also important to include a tiny paragraph at the beginning about who you are and what you have to offer. Um, so this is kind of where you can, you know, big yourself up and say, you know, you're a great photographer, you're an excellent videographer, um, really market and sell yourself. And if you believe it, trust me, they will start believing it and you will start hearing yeses. So a stellar pitch email. This one, I think, was the one that took me the longest. And I'm going to show you guys my first ever pitch email I sent. It's kind of cringy. Um, I, I don't know how I sent that, but I'll, I'll show you after. So a good pitch email, the first thing you need is a gripping subject title. So hotels get hundreds of emails a week from bloggers. So make your heading stand out. So for this, the trick I mentioned earlier with saying, you know, follow up marketing or follow up from Instagram, this is a great way to get hotels to open your email first. If I just sent an email to a hotel and said, I would like to work with you or question about hotel marketing, they get so many of those probably every single day. So it's important to kind of, you know, make it intriguing. Why should they open your email over the hundreds of others that they get? So once you have that in the intro, say who you are, why you're reaching out and what you'll offer. And don't make it salesy. Um, a lot of the hotels I've worked with have said, you know, 
they chose to work with me because I was, you know, I kept it humble. I wasn't trying to oversell myself. And I was just genuinely trying to help the hotel with their marketing and photography. So don't oversell yourself in the subject line and in the, in the beginning, but then kind of tone it down a little and think about the hotel. Why do you want to work with that hotel? How can you help them? What do you have to offer? So down in the body paragraph, um, I kind of just jumped into this, but why their hotel? Do your research. Don't make it sound generic. What are your skills? When are you planning to visit the location? So why their hotel? This is super important because you don't know how many times I've accidentally sent an email when I was starting out and said something like, I would love to work with your you know, brand of hotels or something along those lines. And the hotel responds to me and says, well, we're not a brand. We only have one location. So do your research, really know as much as you can about that hotel. If it's your first ever hotel collab, do as much research as you can and really, really tell them why you want to work with them. It's worth it to put in as much effort in the beginning as possible um, because then you can start building that resume. So in your closing of your email, it's important to list any past hotels or brands you've worked with. If not, then just offer to send them your media kit and portfolio. Um, do not attach these in your original email. This is super important. If you attach your media kit and portfolio in that pitch email, it will go to spam most likely. So just write down at the bottom, you know, looking forward to hearing back from you. Um, if you're interested, I'm happy to send your me my media kit and my portfolio. And once they respond, then you can send those attachments. Um, so to the right here, this is kind of a timeline about um, sending the email because I get a lot of questions about this as well. So your initial email, as soon as you've chosen a hotel that you think is within reach, send out your email as soon as possible. Do not overthink it. Once you feel like it's good, just send that. The follow-up. So waiting for a response timeline. So I typically wait two weeks minimum and a maximum of one month. If you get no response from a hotel, send a polite follow-up. Um, most of the hotel collabs I've gotten have actually been because I followed up so many times. Um, and the Iceland hotel I currently work with, they said they hired me because I would not take no for an answer. I kept pushing. Um, so if you hear a bad response or if you hear a no, don't be too pushy, but just know that, you know, you're not meeting these people right away. This is through email you know, sell yourself, why should they work with you, be persistent. Um, and that really does go a long way. So if you do get to a month, and you still have no response, send one more follow up email, three is the lucky number. So if you've waited, and you hear nothing after a month, send that last follow up email, stating that your travel date is coming soon. Okay, so a little urgency, um, really goes a long way in hotel marketing. Um, I've sent so many emails saying, hi, just following up, you know, I will be in Africa next week. Um, please let me know. I'd love to work with the hotel. Typically this works um, and I get some kind of a response. Even if it's a no, it's a great learning experience. Um, and I don't know how to say enough that you will hear no's um, I've had so many and I still get no's now, which is fine. Um, and I always say you get a no and then you get a yes. So something good will always happen. So this is an example of my first ever pitch email. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it's pretty generic. <laughs> um, a little cringy. Now I look back at it. But this was during COVID. So I kind of used that to my advantage. 
as you can see, like I said to you guys, the intro is about who I am, what I do, what my account is, and where my followers are. Um, I did not add as much information as I probably would right now and what I'm teaching you guys to add. Um, but the one good thing I did is explaining who I am. So make sure you do that. Um, you can see, you know, kind of my body paragraph and how I pitched myself. So I did use COVID to my advantage for this one. Um, you know, saying that people are starting to travel again and, you know, want to find safe places to travel to. Um, so this is from my Savannah hotel collaboration that I told you guys about. And this was my first ever hotel collab. So even with this not so great pitch email, I still managed to get the collaboration. Um, so there is hope out there for everyone because I, I, don't, I don't like this email. <laughs> But as you can see, everything's broken down there and I did get the collaboration, so. So next steps, so you get a positive response and now what do you do? If you've never worked in hotel marketing, I think this can kind of be the trickiest step um, because if you've heard your first yes or your second yes, it's so exciting and you're gonna feel so overwhelmed, you're like, you know, what do I, what do I do now? Um, so hotels will typically try to give you a discounted rate. Um, when I first started out pitching hotels, they would come back and say to me, okay, great. We love your pitch email. Um, we can offer you 20%. Even though I had no experience at the time and I should have said yes, you know, People are probably like, well, why didn't you say yes? You have to realize that even with no experience, you're still still giving your, your own time. You're producing something for the hotel. You're producing photography and videography and writing. Um, so I personally have declined every single discount hotel I've ever gotten. So the first time before Savannah, when I was pitching emails, uh, I mean, hotels, sorry. Um, all of them were offering me discounts, you know, 50%, an influencer discount, 20%. I said no to every single one of these. And I'm so happy I did. Um, my response to that is typically, um, thank you so much for the offer. But due to the amount of time that I'm putting in for the hotel, I have to decline. Um, occasionally the hotel will respond and this will turn into a yes. Um, so always decline. If you want to accept those, obviously you're more than welcome to. Everyone is different. But in my opinion, um, I didn't want to accept those. So just keep that in mind. If they do offer you a fully comp stay, it will usually be for one night if you're starting out. So where I am now in hotel marketing, I can get up to six nights free. Um, but if you're starting out with no experience, it's typically going to be one night. So now they've offered you something. So what can you offer them? So you most likely will not get paid if you're starting out. This is another big mistake I see people making. Do not try to get paid if you're new to hotel marketing. Um, I still don't even get paid for some of my hotel collaborations. I get perks and free things, but I'm not paid from every single one. Um, so we can get more into this later, but just keep that in mind. Um, what you offer them depends on you. So I started out offering one in-feed post to Instagram and story coverage during my stay. So that's just one Instagram um, photo and live stories from my hotel stay. Most of the time, hotels are okay with this. You know, it's marketing for them. Some of them will ask you for images for them to use. Um, where I'm at now in my career with hotels, I typically sell those packages to hotels but if you're starting out, it's okay to give maybe three to five images max. 
um, and that's a little incentive for the hotels. So that kind of brings us to the end here. So how to contact me. Um, so I'm always happy to answer any questions. Obviously, I don't get to chat for you guys with you guys for too long. I would love to keep going on and on about hotel marketing. Um, but you can reach out to me on my website or my Instagram or my email. Um, I try to respond to emails really quickly. So if you have any follow-up questions, please let me know. Um, there will be a link that Annie will be sending you guys where you can sign up for my newsletter. Um, and I will be sending all of these slides and a mini hotel guide um, in that email. So that brings us to the Q&A, Annie. Okay, awesome. I just dropped all of the links in the chat for you. So the free mini guide, um, that's where you can sign up for the newsletter. And that is where, that's the same one where they will get the copy of the slides, right, Haley? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay, we have been blowing it up with questions. So let me see. Um, if you let me change the view here. If you want to stop sharing your screen, yeah. I think we can uh, let everybody see this a little bit better. Okay, so, so many things. And I know we... Um, don't have a ton of time. So we are going to like whip through these as much as we can. Uh, okay. So first is, uh, somebody wants to know what SEO course you took. Ooh. So I did HubSpot. Um, it's a really great, they have a lot of free courses. So if you go on HubSpot.com, um, you can sign up for a paid version, but, um, I just do the free course just to kind of add onto my resume. Um, I've taken that pretty recently. Um, I think the end of last year, um, just to kind of build onto the skills that I have with hotels. But another great website is edX, E-D-X. Um, they offer a ton of free courses and you can literally type in anything like marketing, social media, photography, and take free courses on that. Um, and I should have added this to my presentation, but just taking that course and just having that certificate on your resume is also a really good selling point for hotels. Awesome. Yeah, that's great to know. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, oh, someone, <laughs> I'm throwing this out there because I am very curious. Maggie wants to know, what was the, Are you, if you can say, what is the food blog you worked with in Boston? Yeah, so I still work with them now. Um, it's Brunches of Boston. Nice. Okay, yeah. great. I think you have someone else in the Boston area who is very curious. <laughs> okay. Um, just to make sure I got this information right, someone popped in with it. So the name of the video editor is CapCut, like C-A-P? Yep, C-A-P-C-U-T. Um, it's it's not tricky to navigate, but, you know, everything is right there. It's completely free. Um, they have transitions, they have effects, you can add text. Um, so like I said, my advice would be just to go out this weekend, take a random video and just start playing with that. Um, and then you can act actively start posting videos to your social media accounts and, um, you know, gaining views and you can direct hotels to your account and show them that you know how to make reels. Perfect. That's great. Okay. We still, we're going to get as many of these questions as we can. <laughs> they are still coming in. I love it. Okay. Um, so next question, you mentioned that you had not done your research about the demographics. How do you find, how do you know what the hotel demographics are? Where do you find that? Yeah. So typically you can't, obviously you can only see your demographics if you're logged into your Instagram account. So what I typically do to find the audience of the hotel is, I wish I could show you guys my phone because this would make it a lot easier. Um, so you log into Instagram and let's just say you type in um, Marriott Hotel Boston. Um, 
if you guys know on Instagram, there's an option to see tagged photos or the location of that place. So I typically kind of stalk the hotels and see what people have stayed there, what they've posted. Um, and that typically helps me see who, you know, what their audience is. So a hotel recently I was looking at, I went to their tagged photos and I found it was a lot of, you know, kind of younger 21 year olds, um, which is some of my audience. So I was, I managed to pitch them that way. So that's a good tip to find people who stay at the hotel. Love that. Okay. Yeah. That's a great tip. Um, okay. We had a couple questions about this. What kind of like system or spreadsheet do you use to keep track of who you've contacted and responses you've received? Oh my God, guys, I'm like overly organized. So I have everything color coordinated on my desk. Um, I typically use, um, I forget the name of the website. I think it's Notion IQ or Notion Q. Um, basically, it's a free online tool and you can make lists for everything in life. So you can organize this um, by, you can do a calendar of your month, you can do a to-do list, um, so many different things on there. So I typically use that or just regular Google Docs and I make just a spreadsheet um, and I track, you know, when I sent my initial pitch email, if I got a response, if I didn't get a response, so I know when to um, re reach out to the hotel. Perfect. Um, let's see. I'm going to ask one more question. I will wrap up and then we'll stick around for uh, a little bit longer, but I just want to make sure I know some people will probably have to go. Um, question. Okay. So do you reach, do you ever reach out to tourism boards who connect you to hotels? Yes. So the first, so my first tourism board actually was from this summer, which was very exciting. Um, I pitched the Slovenian tourism board, um, completely winged it guys. I did not think I would hear a response, but I did. Um, so I sent them the three things I told you. So media kit portfolio and pitch email and, I really sold myself, you know, told them my experience and what I could offer them. And I was planning a backpacking trip anyway for the summer. So I told them I would be in Slovenia and I would love to work with the brand. So the tourism board got back to me and set me up with um, a pretty big hotel brand. It's it, probably one of the biggest ones on my list. Um so I got to work with that hotel through the tourism board for two nights, which was great. Um, and most recently, I went on a press trip to Spain for six days um, with hotels. So yes, once you start building a portfolio, it's very possible to reach out to tourism boards. Great. That is wonderful to know. Okay. I am going to share my screen and do these kind of wrap up slides. And then we will come back and do as much Q and A as we can fit. Okay. So give me just a second to get back here. Let me know when you can see this. I mean, it's just a black screen right now. There we go. Yes. Good. All right. Awesome. Okay. So let us just wrap this up real quick. So again, if you have enjoyed this event, we would love to have you join the uh, nomadic, uh, the TNN plus community, nomadicnetwork.com backslash TNN plus. Uh, and that's where you will be able to see this replay and the library of past events and future ones going forward. Here are some of our upcoming events. Um, I'm excited about all of these. So these are over the next week, 10 days or so. So be sure if uh, to register if you want to learn about these. 
And we also, these are the most, uh, we have two in-person meetups tomorrow, San Francisco and Seattle, and then Cincinnati is on the 13th. And again, if you go to the, the nomadicnetwork.com, click on events, you will see a long list of upcoming events. Uh, there may be one near you. And if there's not, you can reach out and think about being a chapter director in your area. Okay. Um, group tours. Go check this out. There are some real, I'm as an, I am an indie traveler and I am very impressed with the itineraries that are on these group tours. So if that is your jam, check it out. And then book club, this one I'm really excited about. So our next book club is Wednesday, November 30th, uh, dogs of Nam stories from the road and lessons learned abroad with author Chris K Oldfield, which is if you don't know, Chris is actually the content director for the Nomadic Network. So this one's going to be great. I'm excited to read this book. Um, and I think, I think that's all of them. Yes. So thank you so much for joining us, listening to Haley and all of the incredible information she just dropped for you. Um, I so appreciate all of your questions and participation. I love seeing all your smiling faces. We love hosting these events. Um, and so don't forget to connect with Haley on Instagram uh, or her website and drop your email in her in that form so you can get a copy of these slides. I'm going to drop that again in just one second. Um, and so those of you that need to drop off, go ahead and you know, do so. And then we're going to hang around for maybe 15 minutes and um, finish answering as many questions as we can. And now let me stop sharing and get back to questions. Uh, I swear. So I have done a couple of these presentations and hosting is <laughs> way more work. Um, okay. I got one more question in here. Uh, okay. I think I've got all of the questions now. Everybody is uh, thanking you if you aren't seeing the chat for all of this incredible information. Um, okay, so back to Q&A. Uh, let's see. So we have a few questions about the legal stuff. So as far as like, do they send you a contract? Do you have somebody, like, do you have a legal person that looks it over? Um, like, so, how are you handling that? Like invoices, payments, all of that kind of thing. Yeah. So typically for legal stuff, if you're working with, say, a bigger brand hotel or a tourism board, they will send you a contract. So for the press trip I just had to Spain, um, there were certain deliverables that they wanted from me and, you know, it was a bigger name brand. Um, so they sent me a contract for me to look over and just to sign. Um, it's really sad to say, but a lot of hotels have told me, you know, they have a hard time trusting bloggers, um, because so many of them have accepted, you know, a content creator to come and stay and work with the hotel and then unfortunately, that content creator has stayed at the hotel for free and not posted anything. Um, so I've heard this quite a lot from hotels, which is quite sad. Um, so I think, you know, just be a genuine person. Um, this won't happen, but they do send contracts for that reason. Um, so it's not that they don't trust you. It's just the whole kind of system that they need to have their backs and, you know, have you covered. So they will send a contract. If they don't, um, I either kind of draw up my own contract, you know, not a whole legal contract because I don't know how to do that and I don't have anyone working for me. But, you know, I kind of put in writing the date, the hotel name, um, what deliverables they're offering me, what I'm offering them. And then I have both of us sign that just so we have. Um because the last thing you want is a hotel to tell you that you have a free night and then you show up and you have to pay for that free night when you're not expecting it. Um, so yeah, I, I would say don't overthink the legal things. Um, as long as you have something in writing, just saying what they're offering, 
screenshot that. So when you go to the hotel, if there's any problems, you can just show the front desk that email. That's great advice. Okay, awesome. Um, this is, we had a couple of questions about this. So when do you start pitching to hotels? Like a month before you arrive? Like at what point in your planning process do you start pitching? This kind of depends on my mood. I know that's not what people want to hear, but um, I've pitched hotel, like when I first worked with Iceland, I work with a specific brand and this is the hotel I told you guys that has hired me now as their lead content creator. Um, so when I first ever pitched that brand, this was last year and I pitched them, I think five months in advance. Um, it doesn't always have to be that, you know, that far, but I knew I wanted to go to Iceland during August time um you know I was looking at flights I saw a cheap flight and I just pitched and pitched and pitched like I'm not joking when I say I pitched about 100 hotels in Iceland um I heard literally everyone said no except one brand and I'm so happy they were the one to say yes because I have a great connection with the whole team and I I go to Iceland now a couple times a year which is great um, but yeah, back to the question. Um, I think it depends if you have a destination that you've already booked, say for next Christmas or something, and you know, you're definitely going, it's never too soon or too late to start pitching. Um, I've gotten hotel collabs like three weeks before going to a hotel. Um, so it really depends, like, how persistent you are and if it's the busy season if it's not the busy season this is super important so if you're going to somewhere like I don't know um, Croatia if you start pitching them right before the summer most likely you will not get a response because everyone goes to Croatia for the summer but if you want to go to Croatia in the fall time which is their off season you're more likely to hear a yes so try to track different destinations and when they're on and off season begins and ends. Yes, that's a great point. Obviously, if it's busy and they can just sell the rooms, that's, mm -hmm. yeah, that's better for them. Um, okay, so let's see. Someone is asking, is it okay to include, include a link to your media kit in that initial email uh, or just only offer to send it? I would only offer to send it because some um, it's, you know, hotels are a business and typically they have business email accounts. And if they see anything in those accounts, not from the hotel, but if the account itself sees any kind of weird links or attachments, it goes straight to spam. Um, I started out sending my media kit and then, you know, I would follow up and follow up and follow up. And the hotel would finally get back to me and say, you know, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Your email was in spam. Um, so only pitch yourself, you know, like I said in that slide, who you are, what you have to offer, when would you like to go? What do you like about their hotel? And then at the very end, you know, kind of say in your own words, um, you know, thank you so much for your time. I hope to hear back. If you're interested, I'd love to send along my media kit and portfolio. I love that. That's perfect. Okay. Somebody also asked that, like, if you're not able to find a person, do you ever just call the front desk? I've only done this once. Um, if you try all of the ways I told you in the slide, you most likely will find someone. Um, so like I said, email the generic front desk email slide into their DMs and also use the contact button on Instagram, on their Instagram page. One of these three ways will always get you some kind of contact. Um, if you're very passionate about a hotel brand and you're like, this is it, like I really want to work with this family owned hotel in my town, you can try calling. Um, it did work out in my favor when I did it. And sometimes it does make you more personable. So it's worth a try. 
Um, but when I tried it, I literally just got through to the front desk and said, hi, I'm Haley. I'm a content creator and I'd love to chat to your marketing team. People are rarely rude on the phone, so they don't usually have a choice but to give you that email. Um, so yeah, this could be a good trick to try if you're not hearing a response. I love that. Yes, mm-hmm. it's true that like they don't want to, they don't want to be that rude. Yeah. It's much easier to ignore an email than a phone call. Yeah. Yep. Um okay, let's see. Um so many questions. I'm trying, I know we don't have time to do them all. So I'm trying to find, I okay. So here's, as well. it's okay. Um, even though the hotels are comped, do you add the value as income for your taxes? Usually no. Um, if it's a completely comp stay and like, that's all I'm getting, um, I don't add that to anything. You know, I, I just keep it simple. I'm staying at the hotel. I'm doing work for them. Um, you know, once I started, I think once I got to about 10 hotels that I had worked with, I started selling my photo packages. Um, so obviously once I had experience and I became a better photographer and videographer, I started selling, you know, um, reels and video packages for the hotels to use for their website or their Instagram So those things that I get paid for, those are taxed because obviously that would be me working as a freelance or a contractor. Um, So they typically do ask you for a tax form um, and you do have to file those. Um, But it's very straightforward and easy. And like I said, that typically the paying part usually doesn't happen until after you've worked with a few hotels and you have that experience. Good to know. Yes, that makes perfect sense. Um, Question, as far as photos, do you use your phone or do you have a different sort of camera that you use for your photography? I completely use my phone. So um, people are interested, but I actually was with a friend the other day and she asked me if I would get a camera and I I said no. (laughs) Um, Nothing against people who have, you know, the cameras, but you guys are obviously seeing that I'm getting these big hotel partnerships just by using my phone. Um, When I was offered the Iceland position, you know, part of that role is creating a big package of photos for the hotel. Um, And obviously I get paid for that, um, but it's all through my phone. They've never had an issue with me using my phone. So if you know how to use your phone properly, you can take good pictures. Um, I think a lot of people think you have to go out and buy like a $2,000 camera, but if you just invest in learning how to use your phone properly, you really don't need to buy one. I love that. I agree. And with the technology now, phones take incredible photos. I mean, especially for web, right? Like, I mean, they might be, you might need something higher resolution for print, but I mean, Mm -hmm. most of us, everything is on the web. Um, so speaking of, this is a great question. Do hotel brands mainly want Instagram content? Like if you have a YouTube channel, blog, TikTok, et cetera, do you include those in your pitch or do you just pick one or two platforms to focus on? So I think if you have other things, it's always good to mention those. So everything I've gotten is through Instagram. Um, I only started my blog I think I launched it this year, actually, um, and published it. So my travel blog is brand new. There's only a few posts on there about hotels and things like that. So every single hotel collab I've gotten is through Instagram. And I have less than 5,000 followers. So I think another thing I hear is, you know, people messaging me saying, you know, I I don't have 20,000 followers. How can I work with hotels? Um, recently, you know, I will not say the hotel company because I don't want to put them on blast, but, um, I reached out to a hotel and they responded and said, once you grow your Instagram, you can reach back out to us basically. So my response to that was, you know, that I've worked with all of these different hotels worldwide 
And hotels don't work with me based on my following. They work with me based on the work I produce. So it has nothing to do with your followers. Um, and you can, you know, kind of go after things, even if you're starting small um, and make it happen. I love that. That's awome. <laughs> um, okay. So a couple more. So do you book the nights prior to contacting the hotel or do you only book it once you get a confirmation? So I typically, let's see. No, I've never booked um, before. If I have a hotel in mind or a destination, I always reach out to the hotel and wait um, because they will book it with a special marketing or sales code in the system. So it will say, you know, influence a visit once you get to the hotel. Um, and once it says that in the system, you usually get some fun perks like free food or free drinks um, or an upgrade. So I typically wait for the hotel to book it for me. Um, I think there's only been maybe one time that I've already booked a hotel, you know, as a staycation or something. And I thought, Ooh, you know, I might be able to get an upgrade or a discount or something. Um, but typically once it's in there, it's hard to change on the hotel's end. Um, just, it just makes it complicated. So I would say, wait for them to book it once you get a collaboration. Okay, perfect. And then you just answered the next question, um, which was, you know, how would you partner with a hotel that you were already booked at? So pitching for an upgrade or amenities or something like that. Okay. Um, let's see. I love, cause I love all of the food things. So does the comp hotel stay include food or do you have to pay for food is one of our questions. Ooh. So this depends on the hotel, honestly. Um, so some of them, most of them will include food and drink, not every single one, but 90% of the ones I've done have included food and drink. Um, the reason they do this is because when you're taking photos and you're posting online, they want people to see the full hotel experience. Like people don't book hotels just to see the room because you're not just staying in the room. Um, they book these hotels because they want to go to the restaurant and hang out at the bar and see what events are happening. So those hotels want you to get that full experience. So food is typically um, thrown in there. I love that. That's always great news. <laughs> okay. I am going to wrap this up with one more question. And so for those of you, if I did not get to your question, reach out to Haley on Instagram, send her a message. Um, I'm just like putting you on the spot, Haley, and telling everyone that you will answer more questions there. I really do respond. I really will respond. I love responding. Some people don't respond. I love getting messages. Um, I'm a teacher full time. So I love teaching and responding to any questions. I love it. So let's wrap up with this one. Um, what is your why? Like, what do you feel sets you apart from others who are pursuing the same path? I think honestly, being genuine. Um, I, you know, I think there's so many kind of bloggers out there and different styles. And, um, you know, sometimes you'll see the bloggers with, you know, big flowing dresses in Greece or, you know, things like that. And I think some people have unrealistic expectations of how they should take pictures. And in my opinion, you know, if you look at my Instagram, you know, sure, I like to pose, I like to take photos, but, you know, I'm rarely dressed up. I think all of my photos I took during the summer, I was in like the same white t-shirt and like flowy pants, um, just in different countries. So I think just stay true to who you are. Um, and I always have when I've been pitching hotels, um, I think just be genuine, you know, if there's a hotel you want to work with, don't make up all of this stuff about why you want to work with them. Really do your research and choose hotels that you feel passionate about um, and that you can see your audience liking. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of my why is just 
staying true to who I am. And, you know, sometimes I do mention in my emails that I work as a teacher or I have worked in education. Um, and I think just showing them that I'm a real person with a different job other than marketing um, does help a lot. Um, you know, they don't want all of these big salesy people, even though people think that's what they want. Um, just tell them who you are and that can go a long way. And I think that is the perfect note to end on. <laughs> Thank you so, so, so much for all of your knowledge and sharing this with us and being here. Uh, this was amazing. Thank so you. I'm going to tell you all once again, if I did not get to your question, seriously, reach out to Haley. I just dropped the links again. Um, and I'm going to let you all get back to your evening. Haley, thank you again. And uh, I will see you all around the internet or here at another Nomadic Network event soon. All right, friends, have a great night. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.